What is up, YouTube? Brandon here. It's been a long time since I recorded some uh, knife reviews. I think it's been almost 10 years, actually. But I've acquired some new knives since then, and I have a little time today because I'm bored with the Super Bowl, so I'm going to be recording some reviews of these knives. Starting off with this classic, the Benchmade Infidel. This is the first time I've been able to own one of these. I lived in a commie state for many years, but fortunately my work has brought me to a free state. So now I'm enjoying all the perks of being in a free state, including owning automatic knives. And this was one of the first ones on the list. Um, so to begin with, this is a special edition of the Infidel. The normal one, I believe, comes with black G10, um, or no, black... I think it's aluminum actually as well, um, but the blade is made of D2 steel, whereas this one is S30V, and it comes in a three-pack. So um, I believe you have to buy these in a three-pack from Benchmade. They come with this flat dark earth goldish color, and then they also come with a green, OD green, and then a dark kind of royal navy bluish uh, color. I didn't want all three. I just wanted the one, and fortunately a lot of dealers buy the three-packs I think they're all matching serial numbers and they split them and sell them all individually. So I was able to get this one. Um, I was fortunate because this run had actually been discontinued, but a few vendors still had them in stock. So I was able to score this one. I think I paid around $440 for this, which is significantly below the MSRP. Um, I think it's still a little overpriced for what you get, but it's a classic and I wanted to have it. So without further ado, the overall length on this thing is uh, 8.91 um, inches. The blade length is 3.91 inches. Um, it's made of S30V steel and it's hardened to 58 to 60 Rockwell. Um, it kind of has a dull uh, satin slash stone wash uh, type finish. The edge, um, the, the very edge, it's kind of a, a flat grind on both sides, but then the actual edge itself is a um, chisel grind which I didn't expect when I ordered it. I was actually a little disappointed when I pulled out of the box because in the past, when I was researching this, the collector's editions of the Infidel, some of them with the more unique steels, not D2, had come with a regular, you know, dual-sided edge. And this one came with a chisel edge where it's only sharpened. Um, the edge bevel is only on this side and the other side is not. Now I get why they do that because it's a little bit easier to maintain this type of an edge in the field. And this is, you know, a military hard use knife, but I thought it was going to be dual edge. It's not a big deal to me. Um, I can reprofile it. I use a wicked edge, um, so I'll reprofile it, but I uh, just wasn't expecting that. Um, so action is very smooth. Love it. Um, both left and right handed works fine. Whoops. My hands are a little sweaty, so it's hard to actuate. There we go. Ugh. Um, yeah, I've been playing with a lot. Um, I like that the pocket clip is particularly deep seated on this thing. Um, but it is not reversible, so when you get it, it's going to be right-hand pocket carry uh, tip-down only, but I'm right-handed, so that's fine with me. Um, like I said, this is aluminum. It has relatively good grip. I wish there was a little bit um, more jimping right here there on the actual uh, scales as opposed to just on the liner, uh, but that's okay. This is really good as far as grip is concerned. Um, one thing I did notice when I got it is that the blade does not sit um, in the middle of this channel. I don't know if it's supposed to or not. It tends to sit over on this side. And what that has led to is over time, as I fiddle with it, it creates a little mark of basically oil or whatever right here. Um, I wiped it off earlier, but there'll just be a little smudge there and I just wipe it off. And I think that's just from it riding up and down. Um, must be rubbing on the inside there. Um, not a big deal, but is what it is. Uh, one more thing about this is there is the tiniest bit of blade play right here. I'll see if I can show you. So I knew that going in that this particular model, um, its design basically always allows a, a little play uh, left to right and up and down. Um, other types of OTFs are a little bit tighter in terms of that. I have no worries about the locking mechanism on here. It's just kind of the design of it. That it, it has that um, slop, I guess you would call it. Uh, so just know that going in. If you want something that's really, really tight, this is probably not the design for you. 
Um, but yeah, the lockup's good. It's a McHenry design. One of my favorite knives ever is the 710, which is a McHenry and Williams. So I was happy that he had designed this one as well. This is a numbered edition, number 326 is the particular one I have. And like I said, it's an S30V steel, which will hold a little bit better of, or will get a little bit sharper of an edge than regular uh, D2 steel will will get. But the D2's, D, D2 is still, de still decent, but for the price you're paying for the Infidel, I, it, it, the fact that it comes with D2 is unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. Um, we have this little um, channel down the middle of the blade with a little uh, cutouts at the end, and I believe that's where the springs sit when it's um, retracted. Uh, yeah, fit and finish is really good. Um, blade is symmetrical. I didn't see any errors or anything like that, any blemishes on the knife. Um, I'm really happy with it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, I think if you can get this for the $400, $450 range for one of the collector's editions, it's not a terrible deal. I, I think it is overpriced, but um, not nearly as badly overpriced as the standard one is, which is the regular D2. So if you're going to get this, might as well spring for one of the collector's editions. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice blade. I'm happy I got it. And let's see, is there anything else I want to say about it? Um, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, it's um, kind of a spear point design, just a standard uh, dagger fare, nothing crazy there. It's uh, pretty close to totally symmetrical. The, the very tip is slightly asymmetrical. Um, so, you know, it's not absolutely perfect, but once I reprofile it on the Wicked Edge, it'll be perfect. So I'm pretty stoked. As far as sharpness from the factory, this is actually one of the sharper um, Benchmades I've had, but it still doesn't you know, past the fingernail test. So I'd say it's maybe like a seven of 10 as far as the sharpness is concerned. But anyway, uh, that's all I have to say about the knife. It's a great knife. I'm really happy I finally have it. And yeah, love Benchmades.